Hey everybody, I uh, just am um, sitting out here on my little porch at the front of our house and I had some plans. I was going to go and do some things and <clears throat> the Lord just spoke to me very clearly and said, I want you to pray. And, you know, I, I, I thought about it and and he said, I want you to pray. And I said, okay, I've got to do that. So I came out side to pray and as I was praying I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be praying about obviously there's a lot to pray about especially over in the Middle East right now especially over all of the violence that is breaking out all across America Canada all of the anarchy all of the lawlessness that is happening so there's a lot to pray for no doubt but as I was sitting here just began to worship the Lord began to bless his name praise him honor him, magnify him, glorify him. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, how do you feel right now about everything that's happening, especially over in the Middle East? I said, Lord, how do you respond to that? How, how do you see all of that? And God immediately reminded me of the days of Noah, that the days of Noah were filled with violence, that there was unimaginable evil, that the Bible says the, the very imagination of their thoughts was only evil continuously, that there was such a level of corruption to the point where God had no choice but to literally destroy the earth at that time. God reminded me about that. He also reminded me in Matthew 24 that Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he comes again for his church. And so I believe that we're very, very close to that time if we're not already in that time. Matthew 24, the beginning of sorrows, with all the signs of the times and you know God's heart is still the same today as it was in the days of Noah God's heart breaks his heart breaks the, the Bible says I think it's in Genesis chapter 6 that God repented that God was sorry that he ever made man that's how corrupt they had become and and the same thing is true today there, there's such wickedness in the world today there's such turmoil such disaster such evil that has been unleashed right from the pit of hell, such bloodshed, murder, such, you know, unimaginable wickedness that is happening as it was in the days of Noah. And I want to just remind you, listeners, viewers, that our only hope is in the Lord. Our only hope is in the Lord. If there was ever a time for you and for me and for the church to be praying, it is today. Because prayer is a mighty weapon. Hallelujah. Prayer can bring, you know, a bit of a reprieve in all of this wickedness and violence that is surrounding us that we are being faced with and confronted day after day after day on the news, social media, you know, networks everywhere. You're, you're just, all you're hearing is just, you know, tension and, and, and just corruption and such on a scale like we've never experienced before. I also wanted to mention to you as well that as I was praying, the Lord reminded me of an experience that I had several years ago at a Christian camp where my wife and I had a trailer at that time and we were up there at the trailer and I just happened to be walking around in the wooded area and there was a couple of picnic benches sitting around. And God reminded me about this just now as I was praying. And as I was just walking around, you know, just so by myself, minding my own business, I saw this young teenage girl sitting on a picnic table and she was all alone. And I, my heart went out to her and I, I started to wonder if she was all right, if she, if she was feeling lonely, if she was feeling scared, if she was feeling hopeless. I really had no idea. And I just kind of went over and I said, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? And I, I, I just was blown away by her response. She said, yes, I just wanted to sit here and pray. I just wanted to sit here and pray. Don't ever, ever, ever underestimate the value and the power and the authority a prayer. Don't ever let the enemy think, why are you praying? It's not happening. It's too late. It's too far gone. God, God is done. He hasn't heard you. There's no hope. It's impossible. Don't ever allow the enemy to tell you that you might as well not pray because prayer is God's plan. Prayer is God's weapon against the hordes of hell that have been unleashed in the earth today. Prayer is God's power and authority that, he's in, that he has entrusted to the church, that he has given us the keys of the kingdom, that whatever we loose on earth with that authority is loosed in heaven. 
and whatever we bind on earth without authority from God is bound in heaven. Amen and amen. And that's what Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So be comforted, take courage, you know, be encouraged, be strengthened in that truth that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Upon this rock I will build my church. It's his church. He is building it. Don't look at it, you know, through your own understanding. Don't look at the church today, you know, through any kind of sense of hopelessness or or, or anything like that, doom and gloom, no. Look at the church today, because he has a remnant who are faithful, who are praying, who are seeking God, who are coming together, who are spending time with the Lord and with the family of God in the house of God, praying and worshiping and fellowshipping together, encouraging one another, supporting one another. That's what the church is there for, to pray, to receive those that are lost and hopeless and hurting and wounded, to bring them in and to minister to their hearts and to bring hope, to bring healing, as only Christ can do. He came to heal the brokenhearted. So don't ever underestimate prayer. Don't ever under, underestimate the power of the local church, because the local church is the force on this earth that the enemy never can extinguish. He can never defeat. He can never overturn the local church that is built on the rock and that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the power, we have the authority, we have the unction of the Holy Ghost, we have the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we have the unfailing Word of God that is forever settled in heaven, we have the truth that keeps us free, and praise the Lord, we have prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. So that's my, my word for you today. Keep praying. Don't stop praying, because God hears and God is answering. Amen and amen. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.